Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We're getting answers tonight. Live at 5, arrested while on duty. A Farmington Hills police officer arrested for domestic violence. The person who says she's the victim is also a fellow officer. All right, Sean, but we're going to begin with breaking news. Warren police say criminal charges are set to be filed in the De La Salle hazing investigation. Warren Police Commissioner Bill Dwyer says the arrest warrants were issued today. He says five 18-year-olds are being charged as adults. Two 16-year-olds are being charged as minors, all with assault and battery. Jason Colthorpe and Warren, rather, he's been getting reaction this afternoon. Jason. Yeah, and this all stems from two new victims who came forward. Remember, if you've been following this saga as we've reported it since October, it was just last month when the prosecutor from St. Clair County announced there would be no charges because of a lack of cooperation, a lack of evidence. In, in the meantime, blasting De La Salle for its lack of cooperation. And then those victims came forward after seeing that, and that led to these charges today. Four months after a hazing incident at a team dinner, arrest warrants have been issued by the St. Clair County Prosecutor's Office for seven Warren De La Salle football players, according to the Warren Police Department. Police say younger players were held down in the locker room by older players and assaulted, including with a broomstick. There was no penetration, but there was an assault, and that's why they're being charged with assault and battery. After initial complaints, the school did its own investigation, which led to the team canceling the rest of the football season. After a lack of cooperation from the school, parents, and even the victims, the prosecutor announced last month there would be no charges, but then two new victims came forward. The end results are that uh, we're sending the message as, as indicated, and the message is if you commit a crime, you're going to be held responsible, be it at De La Salle or anywhere else. But the, the concern I really have is over the school administration, not turning it over to the Warren Police Department as immediately. Commissioner Bill Dwyer expects the players to turn themselves in over the next few days and be arraigned early next week. The reputation of the school has been somewhat tarnished, so we hope that this brings closure and it's over with and the school and the parents and the students can get on with their lives. Now, De La Salle actually did give us a very lengthy statement today. I want to read part of it to you. Uh, we have not been contacted by the prosecutor's office. The leadership at De La Salle Collegiate will continue to cooperate with local law enforcement and the prosecutor's office as they engage this case. Our faculty, staff and leadership team will continue to take appropriate action based upon the facts around this incident and to ensure that it does not occur in the future. That's uh, this lengthy statement, a little unusual because De La Salle has really said nothing to the media throughout this. Coming up at six, we're gonna to talk to a parent who has, who is livid just about the lack of transparency on the school's part. That's at six. Guys, back to you. Well, and Jason, police are talking about closure, but I, I suppose there's a possibility that more victims could still come forward. And they're ready for that if there are and they say if anyone comes forward and they didn't made it sound like they wouldn't be surprised if there were, mm -hmm. but they will investigate from start to finish if anyone else comes forward. Yeah. Devin. Yeah. All right, Jason. All right, more breaking news to get to right now, this time from Ann Arbor. The University of Michigan president just issued an apology to anyone harmed by a school doctor. Robert Anderson was one time director of the University Health Service and a doctor for the football team. At least five of his former patients accuse him of sex abuse during exams. The U of M president made that apology at a Board of Regents meeting. We are there and we'll have a live report with what else he had to say. That's coming up on the news at six. Our other top story though here at five, a Farmington Hills police officer facing a list of charges for an incident on Valentine's Day. Mario Vekic is charged with domestic violence, stalking and firing a gun inside his now ex-girlfriend's home in Warren. Let's get to Sean Lay. He's live in Farmington Hills tonight and Sean, the victim is also a Farmington Hills police officer. Kimberly, good evening. Let's get right to it. We're talking about two relatively new officers here at the Farmington Hills Police Department engaging in a workplace romance. According to an attorney, a Valentine's Day breakup turned ugly. The result here, criminal charges with Warren police coming to this department to arrest this officer for domestic violence charges. 
Two young Farmington Hills police officers just starting their careers but ending their workplace romance. A Valentine's Day breakup resulting in the arrest of Farmington Hills police officer Mario Vekic, now charged with discharging a firearm in his now ex-girlfriend's house in Warren, stalking and domestic violence. Randy Rodnick is Officer Vekic's lawyer. Well, close to Valentine's Day, either before or after or on that same day, they had a breakup. That's all, just an argument. And then... All this other stuff came up recently. You know, it's a domestic violence argument. Beckich is a former Detroit police officer graduating from the Detroit Police Academy in 2017, but then quickly jumping to a job with Farmington Hills. A few months later, Farmington Hills hired another officer, and an apparent police department relationship formed, but then went from bad to now allegations of criminal behavior. The victim going to Warren Police with allegations that she was hit and pushed, then stalked. And Warren officers went to the Farmington Hills Police Department on Wednesday and arrested Officer Vekic while he was on duty. Nobody wants a scenario like this uh, and being on TV and, you know, all these difficulties when you're trying to just be a police officer. I mean, what else can I say about that? Now, just a couple of minutes ago, Farmington Hills Police put out a statement about their officer being arrested. They say they are cooperating with Warren PD on this investigation. That officer also out on a $50,000 bond tonight, but he's on a tether, ha cannot have any weapons and cannot go anywhere near the former officer. I say former officer because we're learning about this situation. It was apparently so bad. She just got a job here as an officer in 2018. She left that job because of this situation, Kimberly. Sean, does the officer have any prior record that you know of? His attorney uh, noted that, saying he has no prior record, and he also says this this allegation, the charge he's facing about firing a shot mm -hmm. inside her worn home, he is saying that was an accident, something they're going to vigorously fight in court. Yeah, all right. We know you'll continue to follow it for us, Sean. Thanks. Let's return now to the global efforts to contain the coronavirus as more cruise ship passengers are heading home. Many are raising concerns about the potential risk those passengers might pose. Our Karen Drew is here with the latest on the situation. Karen. Devin and Kim, the concern was heightened by news that two of the hospitalized passengers from the Diamond Princess have died from the coronavirus. The man and woman, both from Japan, were in their 80s and did have other health issues. Experts say steps to quarantine people on the ship have been ineffective, one even calling efforts chaotic. Hundreds more passengers who tested negative for the coronavirus are leaving the quarantine cruise ship in Japan. Confirmed cases from the ship, now more than 630. That's roughly one in six people on board. There is concern the passengers are being allowed to leave with no follow-up quarantine period, although many nations, including the U.S., are not allowing them to return for two weeks. There are dozens of cases in Japan beyond the cruise ship, prompting the government to advise people to take precautions and even avoid hosting large gatherings. In China, the death toll is now 2,121, but fewer new cases are being reported. The data from China continue to show a decline in new uh, confirmed cases. Uh, once again, we are encouraged by this trend, but this is no time for complacency. And concern remains high around the world. This was the scene in a village in central Ukraine as residents protested the arrival of a plane carrying evacuees from China's Hubei province today. Authorities said all passengers on board were screened twice before being allowed to fly. Ukraine currently has no confirmed cases of the virus. Now going back to the Diamond Princess, after all of the passengers are off, the crew will remain on board and under quarantine for another two weeks. The ship's operator reportedly plans to return the ship to service in April, saying it will be fully sanitized first. Devin. All right, Karen. The sentence is in for President Trump's longtime friend and political advisor, Roger Stone. We've got video of Stone leaving court today. He has been sentenced to spend more than three years in prison for lying to Congress. Alice Barr in Washington tonight as the fallout from a case that divided the president and the Justice Department is far from over. Alice. Good evening. This case has thrown the Justice Department into a political firestorm, but today the judge made clear politics have not entered the case, saying that Stone was not persecuted by any political enemies, as President Trump has claimed. 
Today, a sentence, but no period to the saga of President Trump's longtime ally, Roger Stone. A federal judge announcing Stone should spend three years and four months in prison for lying to Congress and witness tampering in the Russia investigation. She said, you know, Roger Stone wasn't standing up for the president. He was covering up. For the president. The case causing deep divisions and repeated reversals within the Justice Department. Attorney General William Barr intervened to shorten the original sentencing recommendation after President Trump called it horrible and very unfair. But today, prosecutors again changed course to push for a longer sentence. The prosecutors went in today and essentially seemed to revolt against that lesser sentencing memo. The first team of prosecutors left the case in protest of alleged political interference, and Barr then issued a rare public rebuke of the president. I think it's time to stop the tweeting about Department of Justice criminal cases. Stone's sentence won't immediately take effect because he's asked for a new trial. And President Trump, who just this week granted clemency to 11 people, hasn't ruled out pardoning Stone, today weighing in on his sentence. Roger has a very good chance of exoneration, in my opinion. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff tweeting a pardon for Stone would be a, quote, breathtaking act of corruption. President Trump has now put together a team to consider future candidates for clemency that's led by his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. That's moving a process traditionally done in the Justice Department under the White House roof. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. Uh, in addition to prison, by the way, Stone is ordered to pay a $20,000 fine and serve two years of supervised release. We are off and running on a Thursday. Here's Bernie. Hi, this is Bernie Smolovitz in Lakeland. The Tigers continue to prepare for the exhibition season. However, they did take time out today to talk about the Astros cheating scandal. Coming up, Jordan Zimmerman. And at six, former Tigers manager Jim Leland. We'll see you then. Bernie stole all the warmth, so all we've got left are 20s up here tonight, and we will be heading into the teens for overnight lows. Wait till you see the wind chills and the recovery for the weekend next. Some homeowners in Detroit with a sinking feeling. Take a look. What is causing this issue, and how is DWSD working to fix it? Help me, Hank, live tonight.